Hello, hello guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I am talking to you about how to train your abs or how to train this whole area basically it's one of those key areas that people always aspire to have a ripped six-pack they think that it maybe denotes awesome levels of fitness and physique goals I mean let's be honest it doesn't mean that you are an amazing athlete if you're ripped but it is something that's very important to have a strong core and a strong area here because it holds up your upper body and it helps your lower body work. So I'm going to tell you how to train your abs, what are your abs, my tips and tricks. Before we go any further, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and let me know that you like this video and are enjoying my content because it is a lot of effort. <laughs> Thanks guys. Okay, so let's start with actually explaining what these muscles are. So you have the six pack, okay, which is the rectus abdominis, abdominals, and they run along the front. And that's what most people associate with abs. They think about having those prominent six little squares, but there's a lot more to it. You've got the obliques, the external obliques and the internal obliques. You've got the TVA, which is like a corset that runs all the way around deep in the middle. You've got the lower back, and then you've even got the lats and some other smaller ones here called the serratus. So when you are doing your ab training or your core training, you need to make sure you are involving all of these different muscles. There is a lot more to it than just the abs. Okay, so another important thing to realize and understand is that everybody has those muscles. Everybody has abs, everybody has obliques. It's just sometimes they are more visible on other people than they are on others. That is because some people have a higher body fat percentage or their body composition. So you have to take that into account. Your ab muscles are sandwiched between layers of fat. You've got the visceral fat, which is deep underneath the muscle. And then you've got the subcutaneous fat, which is the stuff that's on top. Having too much fat, whether visceral or subcutaneous, is bad for you. It's bad for your heart. You can get type two diabetes. But there is a certain level that's quite healthy. All right, so let's get to the important stuff. How do we get our abs visible? Okay, simple. You need to lose fat and build muscle. You need to take the fat levels down so your abs can appear and make them bigger so suddenly abs are popping and fat has gone. The more you eat, the more you're going to cover them up. So simple, you need to build muscle, lose fat. All right, so let's start with how do we lose fat? You need to simply burn more calories than you are eating. If you are eating more than you are burning, you're going to put on weight. If you're burning more than you're eating, you're going to lose weight. It's simple as that. But how do we burn more calories? It's not just through exercise. Of course, exercise is so important. But there are other things you can be doing to increase your daily calorie expenditure. Meat stands for non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Now that is things that you are doing throughout your day that aren't exercise, but are burning calories. Getting dressed, fidgeting, brushing your hair, doing anything that isn't actively a sport or, or the gym or exercise, but you're moving, so calories are burning. So things like taking the stairs instead of taking the lift will help increase your meat levels. Another way to burn more calories than you are eating is by having more muscle. The more muscle you have and develop, the more your body will burn to sustain those muscles. So the best way therefore to exercise is to be doing a mix of strength training so resistance training, building up your muscles, as well as aerobics, cardiovascular endurance training. 
They recommend that you do between 150 minutes of moderate uh, aerobic activity, or you can do 75 minutes of intense aerobic activity a week. Also include two to three days of strength training. Now, if you're just starting out, anything above what you are already doing will be an improvement but then you just need to keep making sure you are increasing how much activity you are doing so you are meeting those recommendations okay so now we've talked about how you lose fat let's talk about how we build those muscles the core muscles don't fatigue very quickly so you can train them with a high volume at a low intensity that means you can do a lot of high rep range exercises especially when they are body weight however you do need to be implementing progressive overload like you would with any other muscle progressive overload is basically making sure that you are making it a little bit harder every now and then not every session has to be harder than the last one, but you do need to be thinking about maybe increasing the reps, maybe increasing the tempo or slowing the tempo depending on the exercise, taking shorter rest in between and adding weights into the exercise. There's obviously a limit to progressive overload when you're doing ab training you don't want to suddenly be like oh my gosh i'm having to do 200 crunches to do more than i did last week that's not going to be smart training that's when you have to start adding in weights and resistance training so adding in something that is going to make that crunch suddenly even harder that's important with ab training is that you don't just keep doing the same thing over and over again hoping that you're going to get results you might still feel that burn when you do your 20 bicycles and you might still feel that months into your training but that doesn't mean it's actually building those muscles those muscles need to have some more resistance some more shock to help them grow so you also want to be mixing different types of training as i said at the beginning of this video there are a lot of different elements to make up the core so you want to be making sure your exercises are targeting all of these muscles of course you can do compound exercises that are hitting lots of them at the same time but personally i also like to make sure i'm hitting them directly so you can do static holds such as planks to help target the core and the lower back the internal uh, tva you can be doing flexion, flexion moves to target the uh, upper abs, such as a crunch. You can be doing extension moves to target the lower back, such as when we do supermans. You can be doing rotational exercises, such as wood chops. However, do be careful and make sure that you are not doing advanced moves like wood chops too soon. That takes a lot of core stability and you don't want to injure yourself so basically to sum up what i would do is i would have a plan that would target all the different areas in my program so i would do say a crunch for the upper abs i would do some leg lowers for the lower region i would do bicycles for my obliques i do a plank for my internal tva and i do supermans for my lower back now maybe that's quite a lot, but I would make sure that at least throughout the week, I've hit those muscles a couple of times and then maybe done something that targets everything all at once, compound moves, compound lifts. So it is important to remember to train properly, not just in the exercises you choose or the frequency in which you do those exercises, but actually in how you execute those exercises. Making sure you engage your core is key you can actually do a lot of exercises for reps and reps and reps without even engaging your core properly my advice is to slow things down and use your breath for control and you always want to make sure you start every exercise from an engaged position so what that means is if you're on the mat you want to make sure there's no gap between your back your lower back and the mat therefore you're tilting your pelvis and your back is now flat you are pulling that belly button to spine you're engaging your core and from there 
you start your exercises. If you're standing up, that same thing. Tilt your pelvis, engage your core, and from that braced position, you can start. You never wanna be doing anything with your back in an arched position. So I'm serious, guys. If you make sure you're always starting in a braced position, you're concentrating throughout, you're not thinking about what you have to do later on, you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck. Form is everything, concentration is key. All right, so other things that you need to take into account when you are wanting to train and develop your abs is that you need to prioritize your training and be patient with your training. So you need to have a plan or a program, especially when you want to be implementing progressive overload. And you also just want to make sure you've scheduled it into your week. I hear most people say they run out of time or they forget or they're too tired. You have to prioritize it. You have to put it into your workout plan. So of course you also just need to be patient. You need to give yourself time to get the results that you want, but you also need to just remember that core training and ab training is a vital part to staying healthy all throughout your life. As soon as I start prioritizing training my core, I find my lower back starts hurting and I find I have issues in other areas such as squatting and just general life, such as sitting at my desk. So it is something that you always want to be doing. You don't have to be doing hardcore ab core exercises your whole life, but you just wanna make sure that this area stays healthy. So give yourself time, have a plan and never stop training. All right, so less chat, more do. I'm gonna show you now a really good ab routine that you can start off with. I do wanna add that I have an ab guide for sale. So if you are interested, please send me a message. It's an eight week guide. Otherwise, I'm gonna give you one workout free that you can do now, anywhere, anytime, no equipment, no excuses. I really struggled with it. Uh, sometimes I stutter and I found it really hard to get out some of these terms and ideas. It's stuff that I know and I'd written down really easily, but when it came to saying it in front of the camera, it was all a th 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 th. So <laughs> hopefully it came together well. Uh, thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing and let me know what you would like to see next. I'm going to do a how to train your glutes, uh, but then more ideas always welcome. Thanks guys. <laughs>